Hello everybody, welcome to episode 2 of EcoCast. Today with me I have Mr. Wizard. Yellow. And we have a special guest today. We have Nick, an engineer working on Eco. So why don't you introduce yourself, Nick? Hi, I'm Fuller, or Nick Fuller. Um, I'm one of the developers, or the programmers for Eco. Um, mostly my roles, I do various gameplay things. Uh, a lot of the mechanics that you're going to see for the top level gameplay is all done by me. And I'm also in charge of all the modding systems. So if you have any questions for modding, I'm definitely the person to talk to for that. Cool, cool. So we'll have more Q&A for Nick later, but we'll just get straight to the talking points. Let's talk about the Revoke of the Destroyer of the Worlds tier. So as yeah. you guys heard last time, we talked about this. We we're actually almost as concerned as apparently the rest of the community was. We mentioned that, um, but it did in fact, if you missed the email or whatever it is, get revoked that that will not be a thing in the game. So, so quick recap, the Destroyer of the Worlds tier was a $750 pledge for the Kickstarter, which would allow a player the ability to create a doomsday device, essentially having the power to blow up the world. So it was a late game strategy that was pushing for extra funding while also being a reskin for the Meteor. Instead of the, the Meteor destroying the world, it would be the player. But that was taken out because of uh, criticism and just negative feedback. Any comments on that, Nick? Yeah, so immediately when we came out, because we introduced that stretch goal uh, quite late into the campaign as kind of a final push for funding, and uh, as soon as it came out, we saw an immediate divide in the community. There was some people in the camp of, uh, this doesn't sound like a good gameplay feature, which was uh, probably the smaller portion of the amount of people we saw were saying more that they disagreed with it being hidden behind a paywall uh, as a stretch goal, and which would actually have been... Uh, hiding gameplay beyond behind like oh seven to fifty dollars to access this gameplay feature, yeah. So there was a lot of debate about that. We we noticed immediately that there was a lot of misconceptions about what it was. I, as you said, it's it's a little bit more of a reskin of the meteor than it is uh, a whole entire system in of itself. Uh, since the game itself is based around uh, players destroying their ecosystem, and then there's an external threat, which we we talked about the meteor quite a lot. There's eventually going to be like droughts and other external threats uh, as the gameplay progresses. Uh, the nuke, or the Destroyer of Worlds, came in as more of a extension of the idea that the players are the ones who destroy the world, and rather than it being them fighting against the what could be considered the world as the asteroid of a drought or something similar. And because it's an extension of that, it got kind of confused in this whole idea of it not being a cosmetic feature, not being players against the environment being like a whole nother thing that we were yeah, fighting. Yeah, so. that's interesting because the way I saw it when I first heard about this was I saw the the potential for like the most thing that most excites me about this game in general, um, player versus player interaction, not necessarily in combat, but like verbal and political machinations or whatever you want to say. Yeah, no, um, exactly. We're, we're really and looking I again. saw... The, the whole capability of that. And I was actually very excited for it, but then again, I see the whole paywall, people complaining about that. So this concept of the, the players having an agency to destroy the world themselves has always been a feature, but it hasn't been a very vocalized feature at this point. It's probably going to be in in some way or another in the final product, it not maybe not in exactly the same form. But since it already was going to be in, giving another variation of that was our intent. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I saw a lot of people say that it was a pay-to-win because a lot of people wanted that feature for themselves. And when they saw that you had to have $750 to have this really cool, you know, perk unlocked, they were kind of let down, which in turn created negative emotions and then negative feedback. And the ones that had the money or didn't mind it so much supported it. So that's where that divide came from. I see both sides of the debate, and I think that Strange Loop Games, John, you guys did a great decision with taking it out for now, and in the future, I welcome that sort of uh, feature. Yeah, we're Seconded. here to serve you guys, so 
like whatever we can do. But the, um, the one of the most common things I saw about the, the Destroyer of Worlds tier that was somewhat of a misconception was that you could just log on to a server, like some random person's server, and then just launch the nuke and then leave. <laughs> and that's yeah. not entirely true. It would require many resources and sort of management of the Destroyer tool yeah. itself over yeah. a period of time. Yeah, I, I tried to convey this to people, and another requirement was that uh, a world would have to have nuclear technology. So you'd have to jump into a world that was advanced enough to create that device to begin with but people were just you know emotions flinging all over the place and it was getting chaotic so mm -hmm. it was taken out um the kickstarter stretch goals hitting 200k that was very surprising that was crazy that was great i that was really impressive yeah we were all here just going yes yes 200k let's go <laughs> We were really looking forward to criminal justice. Um, that's a system that I personally really want into, so. Oh, yeah. I'm, gl I'm glad we made it. I saw the uh, 150K get reached, and there, were, there weren't uh, a lot of days left after that. And looking at the charts on Kick Track and all that, I was like, it would be cool if we hit 200, but I don't know if, I don't <laughs> know if we can do that. And oh, wow. We did it. We, yeah, we did it, man. It was just phenomenal. That was amazing. You should have seen the number of tweets on my Twitter page in the last, like, what, eight hours. It was insane. I just, enter, copy-paste, enter. Oh, yeah. it was... Just encouraging everyone on the forums just to tell their friends uh, the contest of uh, getting the word around. Uh, me, as well as a bunch of other members, uh, up their pledge. I got in the $30 tier for the early bird, and I was like, nah, man, I got to do that, that, that 60 to support and you know, bump it up, and everyone bumping it up and uh, letting their friends know the ecosphere, that also helped, saw a few people buy that, so. Uh, it's really amazing what the community has done here in all the little, it, it's just, it's interesting to see stuff like Ecocast here and uh, the couple of communities that have popped up, it's just bizarre as a game developer to, to create something and then see people generally excited about it. Oh yeah, man, because so. I'm sure you don't expect it either. Yeah. Like, we see what we see, but uh, it's amazing. Like, thanks to everyone who backed up and shared and helped this community go along. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll try our best. We'll get the best game out we possibly can. Um, so It already looks amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the criminal justice system. So, you said you were excited about it. John seemed very adamant about it in the comments. He really wanted to make it happen. And I personally believe that. If we didn't hit 200k, it was going to be in the game either way. <laughs> <laughs> it would be in a limited form. We can do a lot more with it now that we have the uh, the funding. Yeah, for sure. So, can you tell was, us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's one of the more common... It, it sort of stemmed from the common complaint we got, or, or rather concern, more of a complaint, that laws being absolute sort of ruins a little bit of the fun of having laws to begin with. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was a yeah. bit immersion breaking. Yeah, and, and it was there for a very specific gameplay reason, but with the criminal justice system, if that's a full-fledged system that works the way it should, um, that'll add a lot of variety to the game and, and unlock a bunch of new roles that can be played and new ways to inter or interact with the game when you're not just moving to the primary goal of averting disasters. And it's almost like complementary to the whole game as itself so i think it'll have a lot of variety and a lot of replayability yeah when i saw that come out i was so psyched because i have always been into the people portion of the game that's what drew me to it originally because back when minecraft was still a game that everyone played i played minecraft for the sake of getting people together and getting them to do what i wanted so the <laughs> game where everyone has to work together like that was just like dream come true but then i saw that people couldn't really say no to the getting together thing and then when the criminal justice game came out it it probably made my week not even my day <laughs> when i read that one that's good to hear um yeah as far as the criminal justice system goes it there's not that many games that actually have an inbuilt player v player uh law criminal system like this so we're really gonna look to the community as alpha is coming out and probably into beta to see how this functions and fine tune it to make sure it's a good experience for everyone. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Yep. 
So, do we have any idea when in October <laughs> this is coming out? Because everyone is always That's asking, the question on everyone's mind. And John is always like, we don't know yet, as soon as possible. Um, any sp ideas, uh, speculations? Well, the joke around the office is going to come out last day of October at 11.59 p.m. So... <laughs> yeah, that, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> that, that sounds like what exactly I expected. Uh, independent development, general. But... The, um, we're kind of hoping for mid-October, uh, we're not sure if we can hit that target, so I'd be looking mid to late October. Okay, realistically, and we have to, we do have to keep in mind, guys, that they're trying their best, they're working, you know, <laughs> non-stop, and we want the game to be in a good state, you know, we don't want them to release it the first of yeah. October and it be, you know, could be a few bugs that they could have patched in, or few things they could have tweaked and made better we want it to be later and in an optimal state than earlier that's lacking you know because the best way to kill a game that's really hyped up is a bad launch and then it gets better later um i've seen that way too many times yeah oh, this is this is alpha so but it, it's a it's a backers only alpha it won't be on steam or anything so no early access so we're doing very tight to begin with so we can fine tune and then we'll be spreading out from there yeah, and also keep in mind, I mean, Nick, when did they hire you? I've been on the project for five months, maybe? Yeah, so this um, game's been in development for five months, guys? Uh, the fact oh, that no. it's even no. hitting... It's, it's been, been well, way more. Yeah, much longer than that. Way I'm more. So it's... Okay, fair enough. But it's been... Um, I don't know. I, I would say it probably hasn't been... Because, I mean, they just did the Kickstarter... I think they it's probably been over didn't have a, a huge amount of cash to throw away around beforehand. Well, as far or... as I understand, John did a prototype in which the government saw what he was trying to oh, do. Oh, right, that grant. And I gave him that. the grant. Yes. Okay, fair enough. However, they this game is not like a three-year game development been going, can expect to be perfect on release date. Mm -hmm. It's it's an indie game. So. Work in progress. So development history-wise, we had the educational version, which was used uh, in schools for a while. And then a lot of those, a lot of the concepts behind the educational system had to be rethought about and for the commercial version. Uh, so there's a lot of different challenges to be, uh, to be solved yeah. when we actually go public with a game that's appealed to a broader audience than just schools. So, uh, yeah, we're currently in that phase of shifting gears from the educational version to this commercial version, getting things we've written in, mod support in, and getting content creation going. Yeah, and that, that's why the Kickstarter was made too, as a way to broaden and let other people know about the game. Because going from an educational platform to a more gaming platform, uh, it's a shift in audience, it's a shift in uh, mentality and how you approach the game, and those extra funds would allow to do all these things to allow uh, modding capabilities and the advertisement and just all those extra stretch goals and extra features for the gamers that we would like to see in the game. There was a big challenge in trying to, I guess, convince the mass audience that this game is more of just an educational game, that it'll play well as a commercial video game in of itself. So. Survival game. Yeah, really? Survival game. You, had, you guys had trouble? That's interesting. Yeah, I, I I mean I read like I think a sentence of the game <laughs> of the games like Kickstarter and I was like I'm backing this I'm buying an alpha key this sounds amazing that's very interesting to me that it took that much to get it out of the educational phase because I mean this game sounds hard to me it sounds difficult and challenging and complex and that's what I like in a game and that's what a lot of people like in a game so that's very interesting yeah well, we definitely saw the potential for it to be uh, a public game so. But yeah, originally as it started out, it we threw a lot. The Kickstarter helped out a lot with this actually, because we were able to sort of refocus the entire concept with the Kickstarter campaign, and um, that was one of the primary driving forces to being a commercial-oriented product. <laughs> the <clears throat> DeweyHills.com. It is another community website, and they have a forums and they have a nice little community there. If you guys haven't checked it out. You should. Um, they are planning on hosting their own servers. 
So there's going to be possible servers at DeweyHills.com. Yeah, I, it's interesting because I signed up for their website and all, and they have an over 18 checkbox thingy on there, and you can't make an account otherwise, which is very interesting to me because I could see um, a lot of different, like, well, a, that's going to piss off a lot of people because I know well, a lot of people under 18, but it's interesting. <laughs> that they yeah, they, they want to do, uh, do role-playing. And do we oh, those? interesting. Yeah, so that's one of the things that is mentioned on the website. It's going to be that sort of server. So, of course, you, you want to have a disclaimer and things can, you know, get crazy. So that's why they have that limit. Yeah, yeah. But if you enjoy that sort of stuff, uh, role-playing, especially in the survival game and community aspect, everyone will have their own... Um, it's funny because you're role playing while actually having roles in the game, depending on what you want to do, whether it's cutting trees. Tee he plays on words. Yeah, so that, that's gonna be pretty cool. So that's a community that's that's been around, that's following closely on Eco News, and they're just waiting for for it to come out to start popping out servers. Yeah, there's a few uh, few communities popped up. I think Eco Nation is another one that we yeah. have. And, and there's... <laughs> that's where we all got together. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 We are from the Eco Nation. That is uh, the main driving uh, forum, which I'm very active in. Um, Wizard is also very active in, and that the forum is I'm, just I'm awesome. I'm active. I wouldn't say very. A lot of players are there, and. Uh, the admin Blake, shout out to Blake. He does a great job at maintaining the for form. sure, and it's a very nice community, super cool. Yeah, I see a lot of people trying to gravitate towards these more, I guess, adult uh, communities for this game. So that I suppose you avoid um, since it's a communal game, right? You sort of want a community built around yeah uh, cooperating, and yeah, and that might. I, I can kind of understand the age limit. It, it might not always be true, obviously, but it, it's sort of understandable. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point because, like, my whole thing is because I want to run the world when I'm in eco. I want to be the president or the head bureaucrat <laughs> or whatever you want to call me, right? So it's actually useful for me to have 12-year-olds running around because I can tell them what to do and they'll just do it. Um, mm. But, yeah, <laughs> so that's how I think about these sorts of things. But well, I can see the... That what your point is very on very the true. opposite side yeah. of the spectrum. If you have a uh, older, uh, an older audience, older community, they will know how to read data. You know, they'll know oh, more yeah. about numbers, so they'll be more efficient with their resources and counting and predicting things from the charts and all of that sort of stuff. So the maintenance of the uh, the economy and of the environment, I think, would will be better off in the hands of uh, more experienced players and I'm not saying that a younger audience can't accomplish this it's just uh, uh, less common for them to, re to do this to yep. rephrase it if you come off Minecraft you probably know how many like 13 young teenager yep. reefers there are oh, yeah. who just are out to ruin servers. It's just so. that, that, that age when you want to just troll everyone and you get that satisfaction from just destroying someone's build and you have no second thought about the consequences or anything. It's just like, yeah, ha 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 ha. And then it's you funny leave. to hear you say that because I was running build teams at 10. <laughs> but that's you're, you're just the being a queer. But uh, yeah. You're the exception. I mean, there's always going to be exceptions, but as far as yeah. the general yeah, I population... See your point. I definitely see your point. Yeah. So we and have should, some... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this should wrap into the criminal justice system. It'll give a avenue for griefing oh, boy, to oh, happen, but then there's also mitigation for griefing. So mm -hmm. maybe we can provide an outlet for that if it all comes yeah. together. I saw that John really wants to give uh, a tool to these... Uh... <laughs> to the trolls he really wants to give the arm to trolls well i mean that's like i i would expect that's a, a lot of people's reason for being here and for backing the game and for all of that that's they see the potential for ridiculous amounts of trolling in this game and that's why they're here i mean i play several games who entire communities are just driven by the idea of we want to troll um pub stomping in any rts ever is a major thing that exists so i mean 
the trolling, I see why you would pander to that for a lot of people who are sitting in the comments of the YouTube video, like, why would you ever do that, sort of. Yeah, as long as the, the, it's the, balanced, as long as it's balanced, then no problem here, you know? I wouldn't call it pandering as much as mitigation, but as long as there's True. a push and pull between the people who want to troll and the people who are trying to work correctly, it almost creates a gameplay element in itself. Yep. Totally. Okay, so uh, we have some questions for Nick. Um, so we're going to ask him some interesting stuff. You said you've been on the team for about five months now? Approximately. Okay, so the engine that Eco is running on, uh, safe to assume that you didn't make it? Uh, the server is custom, the client is Unity. Okay, so it's... Oh, Unity. oh! You mean me specifically? Or? Yeah, you specifically. You you haven't worked on the uh, on the engine or well, the engine the Unity, but you haven't worked on the client side or any of that sort of stuff. No, I I work on them, everything. Uh, it's it's a fairly small team, so we're all all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> There's one guy for every single role. <laughs> Are you you're like the main engineer, and that's it? Um, no, Eric Anderson is also. Uh, put on the Kickstarter page. He is the main engineer. I'm the secondary, I guess. Okay. Okay, cool. But you are just as involved as him, getting in yeah. the nitty gritty of all the, all the code and whatnot. Uh, we're we're primarily responsible for that, me and him. Okay, cool. Um, how is it at Strange Loops? Working at Strange Loops. That's oh, pretty great. Um, this is the first independent company I've been a part of, and it's a pretty small, tight knit dev team, as I've been saying, and it's. You know, it's, it's quaint, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, it's quite a lot of fun, actually. We have discussions about all the gameplay, and there's no defined rules so much, so we're able to really move around and be as efficient as we need without having to get caught up in bureaucracy or managers. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, that stuff uh, can bring a team it, down. It, that's the stuff that ruins games, in my opinion. So. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, but an eco, that's going to be... <laughs> The main selling um, I'm just gonna. <laughs> that is true. Um, That's I'm exactly what you wanted to something. do. Yep, it is. It is. It totally is. Running lives, my specialty. Um, anyway, I just wanted to interject really quickly. Um, what did you think of that hydrology and pollution video? Because that seemed, at least for me, that seemed like it came out of sort of like left field of just randomly talking over one specific mechanic. Was that? Was there like lots of questions about that? Do you know why that just came out out of? I uh, the one that John posted, right? Is what you're yes. About? Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, as far as I'm aware, he John is basically keeping to a so one gameplay feature a week or yeah, every couple of weeks. Yeah, that's what I noticed. Sort of. That's exciting. Yeah. So I think he's done one of those before. We had the mod video first, and we had pollution, and then mm -hmm. we had I I actually forget the next one. We had another one past that point. Um, I think next week we'll probably have buildings demo for you and how land ownership works will be next on that schedule. So, Yeah, we're just keeping up with doing little snippets of the gameplay as we go along. I guess I just came in mid-Kickstart and didn't get the first part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be all on the Strange Loops Games website and the eco section of the website. It has all the articles listed. And also, if you get the newsletter, you'll see it in the, on your email, all these updates. And if you're back for dev tier access, um, like the 150 above, or 125 above mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, tiers, then we're publishing, very soon we should be publishing the uh, the source with all the tutorials on the modding, and people can get boy. their hands dirty oh, with boy. that. Mm -hmm. yep. That's, that's going to be amazing, and just thinking about the possibilities of the modding community and what the modders can do with this game is just you know it gets me excited because looking back it's at even minecraft, more unlimited than minecraft yeah yeah looking oh. back at minecraft and i've seen some amazing mods you know and just literally mods on mods on mods packed into one gigantic mod and you know it's game changing so having this you know at the at the beginning when the game launches you know, you're just like, uh, go crazy, guys. And they will go crazy, so... <laughs> it's gonna be... I struggled, I struggled with other games' mod kits in the past through Counter-Strike modding and uh, 
some Minecraft oh, ones yeah. and things like that. No, all the the Counter Strike ones okay, but for things like Minecraft or these specific yep. content creation things, they're, those markets are real rough. They're not quite. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of I try not user friendly. Yeah, they're more afterthoughts than they are in the development. So, um, I'm specifically while we're going along, I'm making sure that everything can just be modded. Everything can be extended as much as you want, and it's all really incredibly clean and not frustrating at all, like Minecraft is. So yeah, you did it in Unity. That makes it like a factor of ten easier without even talking about oh, yeah. Minecraft. And there's no text files. You don't have to like go and open up <laughs> some ar arbitrary text file and start entering random numbers in to get your mod to work. Now it all just seems to work, uh, just magically behind the curtains. So yeah, it's all integrated. So. Yeah, yeah. The, so the Minecraft modding things. For those of you who don't know, Minecraft's code is a running joke in the crazy. general community. <laughs> it's, in, it's insane. But, but they still did amazing things with that. Yeah. So if we give something that is clean to begin with, I can imagine even more amazing things coming out. Yeah. And I can see people that have never tried modding, that have never uh, really looked into that section of gaming it's more accessible so first timers will have a more easier time to yeah, make it's artist, a mod it's artist friendly as well a lot of our artists here at strange loop actually use the modding system right now for content creation and <laughs> so if, if you just know like, cool. if you're one of those modders that's, that's impressive yeah, if you're one of those modders who are like, oh, I don't really know how to code, or I'm not super confident in my coding abilities, but I'm, like, I'm really good at art and 3D modeling, then you can easily add new new items, new species of animals in without having to um, without having to touch the code base at all. Yeah, or, that's that sounds pretty good, adding an extra, you know, uh, plant and just giving it uh, the few um, data that it needs to be in the game, and then you suck at coding, but that's okay because it's going to do it all behind the curtains. Just make an awesome plant or make an awesome animal. And with minimal effort, you can be able to integrate it into the game. Yep. I should put a little disclaimer, though. Alpha, we're going to be shipping with items and world object modding, organism and uh, building, and some other types of modding will come later. Yeah. Uh, for the beta, yeah. I don't. I don't think anyone was really expecting a perfectly working modding yeah. interface at the it, start of the alpha. It, it's pretty. It's pretty far along, but yeah, we still got a little bit of work to do on the organism uh, modding specifically, mostly in the animation side. So, but items and world objects are are pretty great right now. So, I'm looking forward to see what people will do with that. I bet we all are, and there's a lot of people on the forums that are just you know. Just can't wait, can't wait. Hype is just continuing to rise even after the Kickstarter. Yeah, the, the hype train is pretty insane right now, I have to say. <laughs> That's what we want to see. Um, what do you think about the first episode of the EcoCast? We want to hear some feedback from you. And I've heard feedback from the community and people saying that it's, it was pretty good. And um, thank you everyone for the positive feedback. Uh, I do want criticism though. I want criticism. I want to know how to improve so that we can produce the best quality podcast for you guys, the community. So, you, Nick, hmm, thoughts? That's, that's a tricky question. Um, <laughs> or just give me your, your general uh, your opinion on, on the podcast. Quickly opens podcast in <laughs> background. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I, I, that's okay. We have I mean, editing magic. I can cut all of this out. A bit here, but no, yeah, I, I did watch the original EcoCast. I was just thinking it's 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 tricky to do uh, do criticism. I'm just still amazed that there's a podcast surrounding our game. <laughs> Hasn't game even with. come out yet. It's amazing, but the um, yeah, you've never even gotten your hands on it yet. But yeah, we'll be. I, I know it'd be nice to see an expansion of the the news side of, of this a bit. We we have um we always need help distributing what's going on and what's what's going to happen soon but we try to do that for the kickstarter and emails but there's really only so many we can send so um we, we definitely can do that we can even do more of these type of interviews yeah that okay. something yeah that information is always good i'm yeah. totally down to have everyone from strange loop games on this <laughs> 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 yep that would be great man i'm sure everyone would love to hear hear from you guys 
If you have any questions, you can always email me or, or John. we we'll try to get back to you as quick as possible. <laughs> yeah, they are pretty busy. Um, don't forget that there's uh, the Kickstarter comments. There's the email, tons of emails that John gets because John is just like, hey, if you have a question, email me. You know, he's really open. <laughs> I was so surprised by that. I, when I found his little like email at the bottom, I was like, did he actually do that? Of course, man. I mean, he had 4,000 backers and open invitation. Anyone wants to talk to him right there on email. So, and, and he, he does reply. He will get back to you eventually, but he, he does. And there's the Facebook, too, that they have to manage as well with all those comments and questions. And then on top of that, there's the forums. So he's going into the forums and answering questions and, you know, saying stuff here and there while simultaneously working in the studio and working with the team to make sure that the alpha is ready to go. Well, he does a lot of stuff. I always look over. I see he's got code on one window, emails on another window, and like on another monitor on the side, he's got the Kickstarter going. Well, <laughs> not anymore, but something. Yeah, I'm sure he was like, his attention on the on the numbers rise. <laughs> yep. We had a big counter on our on our whiteboard of how the Kickstarter was going. I'm sure you couldn't erase and update it fast enough. <laughs> 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 but um, thank you, Nick. Uh, it's looking around 32 minutes so far. Thank you for joining us. Um, any final thoughts or questions that you have, Wizard, that you would like to have, Nick, while we have him here? Um, no. Uh, just thank you for being here. Oh, yeah, thank you. It's been fun. Yeah, so we, we look forward to having more of the Strange Loop Games uh, employees and uh, developers on the podcast. And I think that'll be really fun. One day we can get John. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, give it six months till the game's done and you can think. <laughs> Wishful thinking, but... Yeah, we, we can try. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's been fun, though. Yeah. yeah. I hope I answered questions to the... Uh, oh, for sure. Corona. You definitely did. I'm sure we opened up a hundred more questions, <laughs> but we'll have to see uh, what the community has to say. So thanks again. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Um, have a great day. Bye-bye.